Kelk. Yeah. Hey everybody, I'm Ian Kelk. I'm from Canada. One of the things I've learned uh, coming here from Canada is that not that many people in the LA area know anything about Canada. Because we're a very proud people. And I was just talking to this friend of mine the other day. I was like, dude, I don't know if you realize this, but Canada actually won more gold medals in the last Olympics than any country has in the history of the Olympics. And he went, my God, that's amazing. I had no idea that Canada was a country. <laughs> so one of the things I've noticed in uh, LA is everyone is obsessed with texting. Everyone likes texting everything. You call somebody, they text you back. And uh, I've, I don't know about you guys, but I find that all the, the emoticons and shit start interfering and getting into your normal day-to-day -day writing. You'll be trying to write something serious, you know, you'll sit down at your desk and you'll be like, Dear Sir, we have your son. Wink. <laughs> Send us $50,000 or else. Frowny face. <laughs> Another thing I find in LA is people don't know how to say hello. You just, you know, you meet people and they try to shake your hand and you get a fist bump or a half hug or the full hug or the single cheek or the double cheek or the air kisses. So I've just given up. I just tried making out with everybody I meet. Like, don't be shy. Come on, let's just do this. All right. So how can I help you, officer? So LA has a lot of uh, women taking self-defense classes. Yeah. yeah, it's been really fucking up my sex life. <laughs> Not that long ago, I decided I would try to skydive. I figured this would be like a big, exciting thing to do. So I, I headed all the way out to Paris, California. And uh, when I got there, they made me get on a scale. Apparently I am too heavy to skydive. This was a little bit of a shock. <laughs> They drop tanks out of airplanes. <laughs> there was a movie that Disney made called Operation Dumbo Drop. <laughs> and I'm too heavy to skydive. I don't even get it. Is it me? Like, are they worried about my safety? Or, I don't know, the Earth? I don't know if they're worried they're gonna get me up there and I start falling and something goes wrong and the next thing that happens, I'm plunging to Earth like a meteorite and they don't have enough time to get Bruce Willis on a space shuttle to blow me up. <laughs> I'm falling to my death, oh my god! You know, I got Aerosmith on the ground, don't wanna cry no more! Armageddon 2, this time it's Canadian. <laughs> So I figured, all right, time to try to lose some weight. And I decided I was gonna try and change my eating habits. And uh, one of the things I looked into was to drop junk food and start eating Subway healthy footlongs. Until I realized one pretty obvious fact that nobody else seems to notice is that nothing is healthy when you're eating a foot of it. <laughs> Also noticing some weird things about exercise is that uh, once you get on a treadmill, time has no meaning. Time slows down. You'll be running and running. It feels like six hours have gone by. You get off. It's been four minutes. You've gone a quarter of a mile and you've got a beard. I swear to God, if I ever get diagnosed with any kind of a you know serious disease or fatal disease, I'll just be like, fuck this. Where's the stairmaster? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna be here for years. Give me some free weights. Yeah. So, uh, from an outside perspective here, uh, I can see that uh, immigration is a big issue here in uh, the States. I uh, go to Pass by Home Depot a lot and I see all these big lineups of illegal Mexican day workers. And uh, every now and then I see the INS swoop in and arrest them all and deport them. It's been really fucking up my sex life. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, uh, I did have a girlfriend for a while, it's been a couple of years, but uh, it was a great relationship. I. Uh, it was an interesting one. It was a, sort of a kinky relationship. There were a lot of whips and chains and ropes and whatnot. And it was great though. It was really healthy until she escaped. <laughs> and one of the fun things about being in this kind of relationship is you've got a kind of strange items and toys that accompany it. And every, some, at some point you end up going through airport security. And suddenly the TSI guy is reading, TSA guy is reading through your bag. And he pulls out a ball gag and he's like, what is this in front of the entire airport? And you look at him, you're like, 
is for a dog. A very bad dog. Yeah. <laughs> um, I haven't uh, seen her for a long time. Um, we never actually formally broke up. And, uh, but over the years I've seen like things, you know, pictures of profile photos on Facebook and she's, she's got some kind of husband theme happening and then later on there was some kind of baby. And I'm, I sort of wondering what I'm sure you're wondering is that um, I wonder if this other family knows about me. I'm not really sure about that. Uh, one thing that I, I do remember is I used to tell her that I would love her forever. Saying, telling a girl I love, her, I love you forever is a very iffy proposal. <laughs> Because you have to say it at the right time in the relationship. If you say it too early, you're like really over eager. If you say it right in the middle when everything is wonderful and rosy, then you are a romantic, you're wonderful. If you say it too late when she's about to leave your ass, well, you're a stalker. But, and here's the catch, if you wait 20 years and say it at a funeral, you're romantic again. <laughs> One thing I did find out about her, years later I discovered, I, I resisted phoning her, I never called the girl. I was very proud of myself for years, I did not call, and as you know, with, with an ex-girlfriend it's very hard to not make a call saying, hey, how's it going? I never called her, and then about six years later I was talking to a mutual friend of mine and I found out something. She had changed her phone number. She has no idea that I successfully ignored her for six years. And I am pissed. <laughs> I feel, I, I feel very angry because the whole time I was tempted and whatnot, and all I had to do was pick up the phone and I would have heard something like, doo -doo -doo. we're sorry, the number you have called is happier without you. <laughs> Please hang up and try another relationship. <laughs> uh, of course, when you have an ex, a lot of things will remind you of her. Um, lots of things, you know, music, books, Movies, movies that you made with her, yeah. movies that you made with her and then uploaded to the internet, yep. Mo paychecks that you received for making movies with her and uploading them to the internet. <laughs> One thing I have learned from the whole thing though is to uh, always make sure that if you're in a situation where your relationship is on its last legs, to always, if any fight could be the last one, you never know when the last, last fight is going to be, when you know, you're finally at the point where you break up. So I always want to make sure now, anytime I'm in that situation, that I want to leave the girl with a compelling reason to get back in touch with me. We'll be in some situation, she'll be like, you know what? I hate you. I'm like, you hate me? I never want to see you again. Oh, really? Not even for the antidote? <laughs> Call me. <laughs> And one last, thing, last thought I have about LA, of course, is that um, obviously there's a lot of driving here. This is a pretty obvious statement. And uh, I check out my car more often than not now. And I was uh, checking out the trunk recently. And I noticed something really interesting. There's actually a latch on the inside of the trunk. So if you ever get trapped inside the trunk, you can actually pull this thing and, and escape. It's been really fucking up my sex life. <laughs> Thank you very much. I mean, go. Yay!